Adapter Tiles evolves the Giray tile set. Introduction Hankins Polygons in Contact, Bonner's Polygonal Technique, and Cromwell's Modular Design System, all describe a way to tessellate a plane with tiles where the motifs follow certain edge rules for how the motifs are to interact with each other. I refer to this concept as tiling. The most notable edge rule is the angle by which the lines cross the edge. A paper by Lew and Steinhardt about the quasi-crystalline nature of Islamic geometric patterns, also argues that tiling could have been a key method used when these historical patterns was made. To support their claim, they defined five tiles from the five-fold pattern in panel 28 of the top cap scroll as the tile set example. These tiles have equilateral sides. They named the set Giri tiles. Analysis of existing five-fold Islamic geometric patterns shows that these five tiles only enable tessellation of a small portion of the patterns, so the Gira tiles tile set ought to include more tiles. Hereafter, I refer to the existing five tiles as the core five tiles. The need for additional tiles isn't a new revelation, as new tiles have been presented in earlier papers. J. Bonner published the tiles of the core 5, as well as additional tiles in his paper from 2003. In 2016, Sean Mark Kazterra mentioned the same tiles in his paper. In his paper from 2010, Peter R. Cromwell also provided an evolved Giri tile set. His key tile set contribution was to specify two versions of the line pattern depth for the tile he refers to as the barrel tile. What these papers have in common is that they don't focus on the tile set. The tiles were used as parts to communicate other topics. Here are five additional tiles from Sir Roger Penrose. P1, P2, and P3 tile sets from the 70s. Not all of them pass the cut into the evolved tile set due to acute angles of the tile shape. Mathematically they should, but from an aesthetic perspective, an artist would argue that acute angles provide limitations in the way they carry the pattern lines. The motif won't get enough space to develop in the narrow area between the edges. The emittance of these tiles is supported by their scarce occurrence in historical Islamic geometric patterns. The shape of the kite tile doesn't have acute angles so it manages to elevate into the set, but even though, the deer is very much acute, it still passes, as it does provide satisfactorily solutions for some edge rule angles. The top copy scroll, is a collection of instructional patterns from the Timurid era. In some patterns the tile edges are visible. They disclose, and thus confirm, several of the additional tiles in the evolved tile set, including the kite from the Penrose P2 tile set. These patterns, and many Islamic geometric patterns, cannot be tiled only with the core five tiles. As these, additional six tiles, have been acknowledged by multiple sources, stretching from the Timurid era and forward. Their relevance for replicating historical five-fold patterns cannot be overlooked. It's time to give them the elevated status they deserve. It's time to evolve the Giri tile set. Non-equilaterality With its five tiles, the core five tile set, is easy to keep track on. With more tiles added, the evolved tile set would benefit to be more structured. The next step, is to organize the tiles based on side length. This will form the base for future development. All the core five tiles have equilateral sides, but many Islamic geometric patterns require non-equilateral tiles. The focus of this paper, is the Phi category, which is the most common non-equilateral category. Tiles in this category, have at least one side that is 1.618 times longer than the unit side that is, the golden section, or phi. Examples of these phi-sided tiles, can be seen in the pattern, that Jules Burgoyne, 
described in his publication from 1879. Here, the design has been tiled with tiles from the Evolved Tile Set, including two of the tiles with non-equilateral sides, the Cone and the Pira Tile. In addition, Burgoyne also depicted a tile from the Core 5 Geary Tile Set, the Bow Tie, where all sides have the length of Phi. Bonner acknowledged this in his book from 2017. He specifies three all phi sided tiles from the core five set. I call these phi sized tiles, the golden tiles. As equilateral midpoint tiles, they fit into the chart next to the core five category. The two Burgoyne patterns are examples of historical Islamic geometric patterns that cannot be tiled with the core five tiles. They require tiles from a non equilateral category. The Phi category is one of two categories that can tile them. The non-equilateral tiles make up a large part of the additional tiles. As they are crucial for recreating many Islamic geometric patterns, they are interesting enough to be defined as their own class and discussed in detail. I call these adapted tiles or adapters for short as they can adapt from one edge rule angle to another. In his publication from 1925, Hankin describes a way in which the tile pattern interacts with each other. For sides with equal length, lines cross over to the other tiles seamlessly, that is, the rule is that they have to cross at the same point and with the same angle. This is the polygon and contact method, or pick for short. In Islamic geometric art, the main edge rule has two lines crossing at midpoint. For five-fold patterns the angle between the lines mostly is 36 degrees or 72 degrees. In his book from 2017, Bonner talks about different pattern families. This means that tiles, with a different edge rule angle, belong to a different family. He defines four pattern families that dominate the existing patterns in Islamic geometric art. As adapters have more than one edge rule angle, they belong to more than one pattern family. Adapters allow a pattern to have a more dynamic design. This pattern is populated with tiles from two pattern families. The main part of the pattern has tiles with median angles. The ring of adapters surrounding the acute star tiling in the center acts like a mediator when these two pattern families meet. Here is a chart of edge rule angles for equilateral tiles. For adapters, we need a table showing the combinations of angles. I've separated the obtuse pattern family into a 108 degrees and a 144 degrees column. I also provide a second table for the tiles with a double crossing of the phi side. Not all combinations result in a motif, and most possible combinations are not aesthetically pleasing. But there are a few combinations that can be used to replicate traditional patterns. For creating new patterns, any angle can be used, and the number of crossings can vary. The edge rule of the tiles here have five symmetrical line crossings, with eight lines crossing as pairs or single lines with three different angles. To optimize the tiling options, the lines at the edge have to be symmetrical around the midpoint, that is, each side of the midpoint has to be a reflection of the other. For Penrose tilings, where the matching rules are enforced to obtain quasi-crystalline patterns, the lines are not symmetrical from midpoint. The edge rule doesn't have to specify lines, it can be curves. Here, the edge rule angle is 72 degrees, but the lines are curved, giving the final pattern a more organic look. Curved lines are not so common in traditional Islamic geometric patterns. Here is an example, in which the motifs are more elaborated. 
Here are examples of golden tiles from the core 5 category. With several motif variations of each tile. Blue and Steinhardt's core 5 tile set aim to support the idea of quasi crystallinity in Islamic patterns, and for that, it was sufficient. In this paper, the purpose of a tile set differs, as it includes a broader scope. The objective is to create a set that can provide the ability to replicate a wider range of existing historical patterns, as well as create new interesting patterns. This requires an evolved Giri tile set. The six new tiles qualify, due to either their ability to meet this objective, or their adherence to their historical mathematical relevance, like the Penrose tiles. The range of possible five-fold tiles, is more than can be covered in this paper, so tiles have to meet other criteria too, like their ability to provide diversity in the pattern. One way to provide clarity is to organize the tiles in groups based on usefulness. We already have the first group, the core 5, as the main gear tile group. I've added three levels of usefulness. I call them G+, G++, and G++. The closer to the core 5 set, the higher level of usefulness. The further away from it, the classification becomes more difficult, and more arbitrary. Level G++, isn't as fixed as the other levels. It contains three tiles, that I've found to be useful to create compelling patterns, the coil tile, and two adapters, the sub, and the helix tile. The coil and sub carries motifs with shapes that isn't common in historical patterns, but without them, tessellating new five-fold patterns will be limiting. I also see the need for a criterion that covers how useful a tile is for certain pattern families. Some tiles are more useful for one pattern family, but don't work at all with others. For example, the bow tie is crucial for median patterns, but gives an odd appearance for acute patterns, while for the pira, it is the opposite. Summary and Conclusions this new tile set has now evolved into 14 tiles, from a small fixed set with one purpose in mind, to a set with a multi-purpose function, and a more complex and generalized composition. This will make the definition of a set hard, and it comes down to the criteria by which one used to sort out the tiles eligible to be included. With the tiles in levels G plus and G plus plus, one is able to replicate more historical Islamic patterns than the core 5 tile set allows. This new tile set, will update Lou and Steinhardt's gear tiles to version 2.0, which will be a good starting point for everybody to build, create, and puzzle their own patterns, experimenting with new designs, and verifying existing historical patterns. The tile palette is set. Start puzzling. The big question for the future is, what else will non-equilaterality bring? Are there other side lengths that fit into the five-fold context? The usefulness of tiles, and different tile sets for each pattern family, would be other fields of interest to investigate. Perhaps it is possible to classify tiles, so they can be used to calculate how pure, a pattern is? Who knows? We might even have pattern top lists. The initial evolved tile set is set. Start investigating. Acknowledgement. Thanks to Craig S. Kaplan for great support and review. Thank you.